Hello there, I'm Michael Lovato, Ironman Live host, and I'm here with Lindsay Corbin, five-time Ironman champion from the United States. Thank you for joining me, Lindsay. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. We're in Hawaii, so no complaints. <laughs> there are worse places to be, for sure, and we've got quite a venue here. Triathletes uh, brought us in for a, an exceptional uh, afternoon here at the ocean. Um, Lindsay, I just I, I appreciate you spending time here. I know you've been here many times, and to me this is fascinating. Some people miss this. This is your ninth race here, is that right? Yep, uh, ninth time racing here. Hard to believe I first raced here in 2006, and I thought um, I'd only come here once, and I actually came. I had a broken collarbone, and I thought, once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm never going to go back. I got to do it. So I did it in 2006. Uh, it was our honeymoon. So thank you, Chris Corbin. And um, yep, been coming back every year since then. So it's been a whirlwind. That's a pretty good streak. And I think in this day and age, it really speaks to your uh, determination and commitment to the race. So that's that's great. And with, with that in mind, I think if my memory serves me, you've got three top tens. Is that right? Yep. Three top tens, a few just outside the top tens, one DNF. And uh, that's yeah. So first question, besides if I've already asked you, I apologize. This is the actual first question. Um, you know, you were I think you were fifth in 2007. Is that right? 2008. 2008. And then you sort of went away from the top five and then you came back strong. And I think you're on this resurgence now. So to me, that just shows, again, that commitment to the race. But what does that do to your confidence when you say, you know what, I knew I could do it back then. I sort of went away from the top 10. Now I'm back. How does that affect you as you approach the race confidence wise? Yeah, I mean, I think this isn't a direct answer to your question, but the best way would be I just look at it as like pieces to the puzzle and someone that's kind of always tinkering. I'm definitely not a Chrissy Wellington that got it on the first time out. And um, the year I was fifth, I was definitely a little bit of a surprise for me. I knew I was fit um, coming into the race. And then I think I almost tried too hard the following years. You know, you get fifth and where are you going to go from there? And um, so it's just been a matter of finding the right recipe and um, what works well for me. And then I think definitely I get confidence from coming back here year after you kind of know what to expect you know those feelings of being out on the queen k and it's desolate and it's hot and you start wondering you know what's going on and now i kind of have those in my back pocket and have channeled from those experiences and i think it's helped my performances um in leading up to it Absolutely. Okay, that's great. No, it's um, and it's not to say the ones when you weren't in the top ten, you were very yeah. close. So yeah. it shows that you're uh, chipping away with the puzzles. You know, you won Austria this year yeah. in a course American record time, yeah. <laughs> um, and so winning Austria that fast, you come in here, you've beaten the times of someone like. Mary Beth Ellis, Kate Snow, some other very fast Americans, Meredith Kessler. Mm -hmm. So does that give you just a tiny bit of confidence knowing you've gone faster than the other American hopefuls? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as far as the time goes, that definitely was a aligning of the stars. You know, in order for records to break or records to fall, you have to have a great course, great competition, great fitness, and great conditions, and kind of all those things lined up at Austria. And so I, I take a lot of confidence from that performance. I definitely stuck to my race plan, and my metrics going into that race sort of led to that performance. But I know that doesn't mean that I'm going to – it doesn't guarantee a good performance here, but it's definitely an experience you can put in your back pocket. And I know this year I've been going well. I haven't missed a day of training all year because um, of sickness or illness, and I think that was a big goal of mine. And I know that when I'm healthy and consistent, that that's led to great performances for me. And with that, you know, I'm a lot happier of a person. You know, you don't have that mental, like, up and down that you're dealing with. And um, with that comes confidence as well. So I'm excited to sort of get out and play on Saturday and see where things line up. But I'm not expecting anything by any means because those are all, all the Americans are phenomenal athletes that we have lining up. And I think it's exciting for sure. Well, it is. And, you know, you guys, I think, all bring the best out in one another um, on race day, certainly. So you just said the word metric, and it made me think uh, about another great question, just metrics. I mean, that, that means scientific, thought-out, number-crunching, <laughs> which makes me think of your coach. And yeah. um, so you're coached by Jesse Kropelnicki. Talk to us about the changes and, and what that's done, I think, again, the, the word we'll use is confidence, your confidence yeah. coming in here to Kona. Yeah, so his training definitely is a lot different than I've done in the past, and then some of it is very similar. But um, his stuff is all very measured and regimented. And actually, when I first started talking to Jesse, I was a little bit afraid it wouldn't be a good fit because I thought 
I don't know if I can fit into this, like, what if you don't fit into the equation? How's that going to work out? And um, I think, if anything, actually, his training has provided confidence for me because a lot of the sessions are repeated. A lot of the sessions are kind of on the boring side. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> but it allows you to measure your progress and kind of get an idea of where you're at. So I did a lot of similar sessions for this race that I did before Austria and that I did before Ironman Cabo. And I know I'm more fit now than I was before Austria according to the training metrics, you know? So with that, I think that I can line up to the start line with a little bit more ease of like, okay, I've ticked off the boxes. I know in, internally I'm more fit than I was then. So hopefully that, you know, will lead to a great performance. But then you have all these other things like wind and heat and nutrition and, uh, you know, staying disciplined out there and following your plan. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. Can't say too much more about it. Started giving away the yeah, secrets, yeah. but uh, no, you know, it's funny. You said that, uh, sorry, Jesse, they're boring, but I, I gather he'd probably like that. That's sort of a yeah. compliment. The sessions are boring and controllable. Um, so question about the dynamics of this race. You've been racing since 2006. Six, the women's race has changed dramatically. Yeah. So now you come in here with not a front pack swim, but an improving swim. Yeah. Um, talk to us about how you approach the race now, knowing it's a little bit more of the group mentality from the women's side. Yeah, and I think that's actually one thing I'm going to do different this year is that um, in the past I felt this pressure of like there's going to be this front pack up there and I got to chase and I got to close it. Like, you're right, I'm definitely not in the front pack swim. I feel fairly confident I'm in the chase pack now. Um, every race this year, most races last year I came out, you know, main pack with Rennie or, you know, some of the other strong contenders. But um, in the past I've made the mistake of maybe not being as patient and trying to get to the front of the race as quick as you can. And I think I've paid for that later on, particularly the back half of the bike. Um, so for me, one thing I really want to work on this year is that I have a plan. I'm going to stick to it. It's a really long day, which I know from experience. And I think if I stick to my fueling, stick to my pacing, that um, I'm going to be able to pick up the pieces on the marathon. And I have a lot more confidence in my run being not injured this year. So I know right. that um, I don't have to come off the bike right away to make a statement later in the race. Good for you. That's <laughs> great. And I, um, I look forward to watching that unfold and that, seeing that discipline played out. Two things you just made me think of is you said Rennie. Yeah. Um, so we saw a lot of dominance from Chrissy Wellington where girls tried to figure out how to get close, much less beat her. Now, what do you need to do to beat someone like Rennie? Move up from, say, 10th last year to the top step yeah. or the podium? Well, I definitely don't want, I don't think I can be running uh, below 250 quite yet. So uh, I don't, you know, it's a matter of getting away from, you know, her on the bike or the swim. But like I said, ultimately, I'm going to take care of myself on race day and see where the chips fall. And it's definitely the fastest swimmer, the fastest biker, fastest runner. I know from experience at this race and looking at past results, um, you don't have to be remarkable in one. It's um, about just being consistent. So I don't think this race rewards superheroes. I mean, every now and then it kind of does. You know, you see someone like Luke, you know, who got away on the bike last year. But I think um, just being really consistent. I think that's great. I mean, you've got a really good outlook. And I think that's where your experience really helps you. You show you have many more years here than, than mm -hmm. someone like Liz Blashford or the others you're racing. Um, you said consistency. You said confidence. You said mm -hmm. metrics. You said a lot of things that keep coming up. Um, I think that's why we saw you come into the top 10 very near the end, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yesterday I definitely heard last year, but definitely was, uh, came down to the wire. It was a sprint finish on a Lee drive with Amanda Stevens. And I felt so bad passing her, but then it's like that last podium spot, you know, last paycheck, you, you know, you got to just got to do what you got to do and, uh, know that at the end of the day, we're friends and Americans, you know, whatever, sure. but yeah. No, good for you. That's what we love to see. Um, I'm just going to dive into some rapid fire questions. This Let's is just do a it. <laughs> quickie. So I'll just throw some things out there. You pick one or the other. First thing is race week in Kona. Are you AC off, AC on? I'm in the middle, 50 50. 50 50. <laughs> coffee this week or no coffee this week? No coffee. Uh, Dave Scott fan or Mark Allen fan? Uh, Jesse Kroppel, Nikki fan. <laughs> there you go. I just mean, you know, they had that battle. Hold on. Don't throw, don't throw me off my game. Compression socks or no compression socks? Compression socks at home. Okay. Okay. So not in public. No, nope, not okay. in public. And the final, this is a big one. Will you be at the underpants run or will you not be at the underpants run? I've never done it. So I'm not going to start this year. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No. Hey. I hear you look amazing out there no. though. <laughs> 
in the past, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. I had a couple of good skivvies. So, well, Lindsay, I really appreciate you joining us, and I certainly uh, wish you all the best. I look forward to following. I know the viewers at home are big fans. We'll be rooting for you. We love watching your videos that you put out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll be back with some more guests, folks. So thanks to Lindsay for joining us. Trathlete Magazine has lots of interviews all week, so come back and join us here at this gorgeous spot by the sea. Adios. <laughs>